This is the best part. All right, 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 copyright, copyright. Um, Dennis Lieberdeff, cruiserweight. Um, he's a Rob Binsky fighter. Rob Binsky is the promoter of um, Alexander Provekin and pretty much all the prominent uh, Russian fighters. He is uh, he is a cruiserweight. I, it's 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 really hard to describe his style, but you may remember him for um, knocking Roy Jones out. That split or majority decision, I believe it was a majority decision loss to Marco Huck back in 2010. I was barely covering YouTube at that time. Um, he fought James Tony. Of course, he fought that James Tony, the over the hill James Tony, because he's been over the hill for a long time. Um, who else? Let me pull up his uh, resume. Um, I know he fought Latif Coyote. I know he fought Guillermo Jones. Remember, when he fought Guillermo Jones, that's when he got that freakish eye injury, and he was off for like a year and a half. But now he's back facing a, a cruiserweight who a lot of Americans should be somewhat familiar with, depending on how hardcore of a boxing fan you are, because he fought on a Rock Nation card. I'm trying to remember if that was the Rock Nation card that had um, Cotto versus Canelo. I don't remember or Cotto versus Gil. I don't remember. But he fought on a Rock Nation card. He's also fought on a uh, Premier Boxing Champions card, a P uh, PBC on Spike, I believe it was. So he's been around. He is a uh, Abel Sanchez fighter. He is said to be a guy who's been given the, the, the only guy in um, Abel Sanchez's gym to be giving um, Gennady Golovkin some problems. Um, of course, there's going to be somebody to say, well, of course, he's a cruiserweight. But, you know, um, what else? I mean, he's good. He seems as though he, he seems like a solid. I can't, you really can't call him. He's more of a boxer than a pressure fighter. He is a power puncher, though. But he hasn't really fought anybody. He's 23 years old. He's 23 and 0 with 17 KOs, if I'm correct. 23 and 0 with 17. What is it? Let me see. 23 and 0 with 17 KOs. Um, last opponents. Uh, Jordan Shamel, Isaiah Thomas, I believe. Was that the one that was on Spike TV? Rodney Moore, Felix Cora Jr. You know, the Isaiah Thomas guy was undefeated. You know, not the basketball player, of course. Just joking around. And really, there's 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 nothing there. So now this is actually a, a, a big step up for him, you know, in competition. Because as I said, looking at uh, Liberdev's resume, you got uh, Ramirez, who was a known name. Uh, Latif Quixote, who was a known name. Um, Guillermo Jones, the one who broke his broke his eye, James Tony, Roy Jones, eh, you know Marco Huck. So already right there, he's you know in in um, um Enzo. So already right there, he has a you know a, you could say it's a solid resume. And when you look at the cruiserweight division as a whole, you got uh, Alexander Usyk, which is the uh, video I'm going to be doing next. His last fight, he's now a WBO. Uh, cruiserweight champion, very good Ukrainian fighter, very good friends with um with uh, Vasily Lomachenko. And if you haven't watched him yet, he's a very good overall boxer. I'm kind of concerned about like his power because even though he's only had ten fights, he he he's more of a fighter that will outwork you. There are flaws uh, flaws there, but he has a high punch output. He does a lot of movement and like uh, around the ring and also a lot of upper body movement. So, you know, there's some things to be, you know, concerned about, though. You know, so it, him versus Lieberdev in a unification, that's a fight that can very well likely happen soon. Um, after, Of course, if Lieberdev gets past um, um, Gassiev or vice versa. But I just don't know about Usyk yet. I just don't know yet. You got Tony Bell, UWBC champion. He's now fighting um, at heavyweight. He's fighting David Hay. March the 4th of 2017 at the O2 Arena. Um, he says if he wins, he wants Anthony Joshua, Tyson Fury, and all those guys. So I guess if he fights David Hay and beats David Hay, he's going to stay at heavyweight. But it's a win-win situation for him because he can fight David Hay and people are going to clown David Hay, not Tony Bellew. They're going to say, well, Tony Bellew had heart for moving up. As far as David Hay is concerned, they're going to say, oh, look, you're just after the money. So I already did a video on that. We're not going to get too deep in that. You got Tony Bellew out there. Um, you got uh, Breedis out there. I just saw a couple of fights of his on Sunday. You got, uh, of course, Christoph Glowacki, or Glowacki, who um, 
was defeated by Alexander Ustik. I covered that fight. You got Steve Cunningham. Uh, he's still around, even though he's 40 or 40 plus now. I believe he's like 40 now. You know, but he's still a threat to anybody. You got Babette Shumanov. I really just think he's just a title holder, in my opinion, especially with that whole thing with BJ Flores. Remember, he was a light heavyweight. You know, with notable fights against, um, he fought Tavoris Cloud, right? That's where he got that belt from. Where did he get that belt from? And then he fought, of course, Bernard Hopkins lost his belt. Bernard Hopkins went on to fight Sergey Kovalev. You know, you get where I'm going. He moved up to cruiserweight. Um, so the cruiserweight division is, you know, like you, you, you got a lot of names out there, like good names. And the thing is, it's hard to talk about maybe light heavyweights moving up the cruiserweight because a lot of those guys, it's, it's, it's a 25 pound, you know, difference. You know, so that's a big jump. That's why when you see light heavyweights move up the cruiserweight, is usually at like toward the toward the end, you know, or you know, like a crossroads time into the, in, in in their career, because that's when they just say, "All right, well, cool. I'm just tired of cutting weight, basically." You know, so I, I'm just gonna fight at my natural weight. You know, so a lot of these guys end up moving to heavyweight, and I really wonder how Dennis Lieberdev or um, Murad um, uh, Gassiev would do at heavyweight. But anyway, I don't want this video to be a video that's going to go on forever. So, of course, I'm going to be covering the fight on T Street Controversy. This is T Street Controversy Live. I cover every single major fight live. All the links to my social media are right down below in the description box. If you're interested in covering fights, where's this fight taking place? Where is this fight taking place? If you can, if you can break the language barrier for me. And if you understand this video, if you're interested, oh yeah, we need somebody in Russia. If you're in Moscow, or if you're in Russia, right, and you want to you wanna cover fights, you want to help me cover fights, you want to go to fights for free, you have to work, but go to fights for free, free, you have to work. But please email me, I need somebody who, who's bilingual. You know who can speak who can speak Russian, you know, and English, and that can help me, you know, get into that, you know, Russian, you know, you know, get into that Russian market. So please email me at editor. That's e d i t o r at fightview three sixty dot com. I'm launching the website. It's not it's not coming soon. It's soon now. Please subscribe.